Hello everyone, welcome to day two of the Holiday Memories Advent Knit Along. Uh, my name's Kyle and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about one of my favorite things about the holidays and that is Christmas ornaments. So um, I have one from my childhood. This is one of the Christmas ornaments that I have from um, way back when. This was made in the early 80s, probably 82 or 83, I guess, by my mom. And it's macrame, which I think is fun. This was, I think, around the year when she decided that we were going to have a pretty Christmas tree. And she made a number of different ornaments that were handmade and also went to, I guess, the dollar store or somewhere like that and bought little tiny parasols and um, I remember little bunches of dried flowers or some kind of something like that. But she did a few things and it was sort of a curated pretty tree because she wanted a beautiful tree. Um, of course, on, in addition to these kinds of ornaments, she also put um, the ones that we made as kids and all of that. Those have since um, found their way through um, many years of moving and all of that. And I think most of them were lost during um, some flooding in a basement. But um, a couple, I have a couple. I have this one and I have one or two others that um, I just love. So that is the one from my mom. And then something that happened every year as a kid is my dad had a troll doll. There was this naked troll doll. Um, it's all wild and crazy. And he always wanted to put it on the tree. And I don't really know the reason why, except that I think he thought it was funny. I'm not sure. He had an interesting, very quiet sense of humor. My mother did not like this troll doll. It was dirty, it was naked, um, and wild and not Christmassy. And I don't know where the original went, but a few years back, I started thinking about that troll doll and how much I, I loved the idea that it was there. It was just funny to me as a child. Um, so I decided that sometimes when things are lost, we can recreate them, right? So I went online and found, ah, I found a troll doll. And it is a dirty little troll doll that is the same one like my dad had and we had in our on our family tree. And he has crazy, crazy hair and he hangs up. And so this little naked troll doll lives on the back of my tree every year. So that's why there's a troll doll on my Christmas tree. Um, I moved to San Francisco in um, 2010 or so, and a few years into moving there, I decided to do a ornament exchange. And my friend Kate, um, so we all made ornaments and exchanged them. So if there were 12 people, we all made um, 11 ornaments, one for each of the other people, or 12 if you wanted to keep one for yourself. Um, and then you sent out all of your, your ornament to the people um in the group and then all the people in the group also sent you an ornament so if there were 12 people in the group you end up getting 11 different ornaments from people and they were all handmade and super fun and one of my favorites is this this is by my friend kate and kate is um super creative there's a little tiny um note that goes inside this heart and inside the note it says um this is from 2016. The beating of this heart we barely hear. The world around us seems to fall apart. The winter when there is so much to fear. Take time to love. Embrace your friends. Take heart. So uh, the, the poem is by Jean Heller and uh, the little heart was knit by my friend Kate. So the poem lives in the heart and that goes on my tree each year as well. Then um, 2017 rolled around and I moved to Washington State and my friend Chuck um, every year because I had talked to him he and his partner um, have a tree full of all these really wonderful ornaments that are all full of such great memories and I thought gosh I don't really have that many ornaments that have memories and so from that moment on each year Chuck would buy me an ornament that commemorated that year. And in 2017, I moved. And so this is the tree, the ornament that I got. It's a road trip one. And uh, it says California to Washington. So this is the ornament from 2017 commemorating that year. The big thing that happened was I made a big move and moved to Washington State. And um, the next year, I bought a condo. 
And so I was sending, you know, pictures and whatever and posting them on social media, of course, excited about it. And my condo has a bunch of power lines outside of it. And I don't love the power lines, but they're kind of fun and architectural and make for good pictures. So I posted them. And that year I got a package in the mail and it was from my friend Chuck who had um, added color and changed up the coloring and had it printed on this little ornament. So um, it is, and actually it kind of, well, I think it's just torn paper. But anyway, um, those that is my commemorating buying my first condo. So that's pretty cool. This year, of course, I bought a house. So I'm not sure what my ornament will be, but I'm certain that it will have something to do with my new little, my new little house in Tacoma, Washington. The other thing I want to show is um, a piece that I got, I think, two years ago. This is an assemblage, like a collage, that my friend Deborah made. Um, Deborah has been in my life since I was 17, 16, maybe even earlier than that, but I've known her for ever, and she actually taught me how to knit. So thank you to Deborah, who's playing along with us. Um, she made this for me and this comes out and lives in my home. Sometimes it gets snuggled into the tree. It's a larger thing, but that's okay. Um, but I just love it. And it's a, it's got a lot of Tim Holtz pieces in it, but she did a lot of painting and it's dimensional and fun. And it's in this little shadow box and trimmed in velvet ribbon. And I just love it. So anyway, those are a few of my ornaments from my personal tree. I think um, it's really neat for ornaments to have some kind of a meaning. And I love the idea of one ornament every year uh, to commemorate something that happened that year. So if you have traditions like that, you can always share them with us. We're talking and having a great time in the Ravelry Forum. Um, of course, if you have questions about the pattern, you can email us, the hello at makersmercantile.com or post questions in that forum as well. And we'll see you again in the morning. So have a fun day two of your adventure. And uh, thank you so much for joining us.